Hello, and welcome to an all-new episode of the Transfix Take podcast, where each week we deliver news, insights, and trends for shippers and carriers. It's the week of April 17th. I'm Jenny Ruiz, and of course, I'm always joined by our market expert, Justin Mays. Mays, how's it going? It's going great, Jenny. Um, coming into the back half of April, so get ready to get prepared for some seasonality and DOT week in a couple of months. Oh yeah, I think we're, a, we might actually be a month out from the beginning of DOT week, so we're getting there. Yeah, definitely. All right, well this week we're gonna do something a little different. We're getting right into it, kicking things off with, of course, the regional breakdown. Now, as we've been saying, April is a critical month to determine how seasonal seasonality will kick off the trajectory of Q2. And although we're st still seeing some flatness over the last seven days, Mays, what's happening with the national average rate per mile and tender rejections this week? Well, Jenny, surprising over the last seven days since the last time we spoke, both the average rate per mile and tender rejection index has increased. Um, the tender rejection index went from 3.5% to almost 4%. Um, and okay. now, right now, we're about $1.64 a mile on line haul. Um, we've kind of been sitting flat so far this week, but it's definitely a rise from where we were last week after declining a little bit. But I would say this was most likely anticipated for most people, um, mm -hmm. for sure. Okay, so then I have to ask over the next seven days, where do you think we're going to see some of the greatest gains and, and the biggest losses? Well, I think it'll be easiest to look at it on a regional to regional lane. Sure. Um, and, you know, as we gear up towards, you know, produce season, we're definitely going to continue to see the hotter markets for carriers to have more negotiating power originating out of the southeast. You know, you know, region to region lanes like southeast at the coastal region and then up to the Midwest and Northeast. Additionally, uh, on the West Coast, you know, we've been talking recently about the West Coast gaining some momentum. So mm -hmm. I think the West Coast down to the South, we're going to continue to see some pressure on rates. Um, on the flip side, the Northeast and Midwest are going to continue to see declines, especially for freight going down to the Southeast and coastal. As we start experiencing, especially in the beginning of May, that Southeast region start heating up. Okay, so why don't we take a, a closer look at some of the regions. Now, last week we noted that the Midwest saw an overall decline of 0.54%, uh, but in the last seven days, there's definitely been some sort of upward momentum for carriers with a 0.18% rate increase. Do you think weather had something to do with this over the last seven days? So I don't think it's too much about weather. Uh, I think it really has to do with the rural markets. So when we're looking at the Midwest and aggregate, especially here at Trade 6, mm -hmm. we're including a lot of rural markets that did see a pretty impactful increase that drags up the Midwest overall. Um, even some of the higher volume markets saw a little bit tightening, but I don't think this is going to stick for long. Um, I think we're going to continue to see next week when we talk the Midwest experience a down decline, but it really depends on where that volume is, is destined to. Um, if it's destined to stay within the Midwest mm -hmm. or go up to the Northeast, it is tight at capacity, but as we get more carriers wanting to go down to the south and southeast and more volume originating out of there, it's going to continue to drag down that rate. Okay, now one region that's continued to experience loosening is the northeast. This region should be no surprise, I think, for either of us and most of our listeners, as we've noted, this region continues to tell us the same story. But it's worth asking if there are going to be some breakout markets that we should keep a close eye on. Nothing so far. I think it's the same story um, week after week yep. right now. Uh, we don't, I think we're hopefully past any weather impacts of, you know, you're up in New York. I'm sure it's maybe 80 like it is down in Atlanta right now. Um, it's beautiful right now. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think we're going to see too much um, really create volatility in the Northeast. Uh, you know, there's some markets out towards the restaurant part of the Pennsylvania that has seen some tightness, but I, I don't think it's anything that's going to stick. We're going to continue to see rates on their de decline. Okay, now potentially a similar story here. The coastal region experienced the largest change of all regions in the last seven days with a rate fall of 0.77%. And seasonality likely won't hit this region changing much until about the summer months. But what could change that? And really, should we expect any changes out of this region anytime soon? I don't think we're going to see too much of a change at an aggregate level. It's going to stay, remain relatively flat with a slight decline, but it's really going to be yeah. dependent on where the freight is destined. Um, we're seeing rates rapidly decline going down to the southeast or even staying within the coastal area uh, or going destined to the south. But for freight heading up to the northeast or to the Midwest, it is 
quickly tightening. Um, you know, carriers are not willing to go there. But overall, it's, it's going to weigh kind of flat, more on the decline side as more freight originates out, out of the southeast and south. Okay. So let's go over to the west coast because this remains one of our biggest regions to watch as most markets are seeing increases with the exception of a handful over the last uh over the last 30 days we've seen a nearly two percent overall rate increase what is the breakdown on the west coast maze yeah i mean the state of california and you know nevada arizona even parts of new mexico continue to be tighter um driving yeah. rates up across the entire west coast especially because there is more volume in the longer lengths of hauls. Um, we're going to continue to keep an eye on the Southern California markets like Los Angeles and Ontario. We saw volume yep. increase there. It's, it's, it's maintaining, which is good for carriers. Uh, but it would be interesting to see how much tighter this gets as we go farther into you know, spring and summer. I'm, I'm banking on the West Coast being one of the most exciting regions for the year, which is a big statement, but I'm not going to hold myself to that too much. Uh, <laughs> that said, shifting over to the South, uh, it was one of the regions that had some, of, some interesting weather interruptions last week, but it looks like that wasn't enough to really tighten the market for a significant jump. I will say it's worth noting this region did experience a 2% rate increase both over a 30 and 60 day period with cross country runs being sort of the biggest breakout uh, gain there. What could we expect here in the next week? I think we're going to see it um, decline back from yeah. you know some of the increase in tightness caused by some of the, that you mentioned, severe storms. We saw severe mm -hmm. storms impact capacity throughout the Gulf states um, and Texas especially. I think over the next couple of weeks, we're going to continue to see rates sit flat, if not increase, especially if it's going northbound to the Midwest and, and Northeast or even over to the West Coast, um, vice versa, the freight going into the South will be cheaper for shippers to move. So I don't think we're going to see too much until we get on the heels of DOT week. Okay, and now closing out with the Southeast, uh, the Miami market is what we're keeping a close eye on, but there are, but the three regional lanes forecasted to increase the most for carriers are all out of the Southeast. Talk to us about how volume increases could impact this greatly uh, over the next month. Yeah, definitely. Well, as we approach produce season, if it is a strong yep. year, we're definitely going to see rates skyrocket, quite honestly, going up to the Northeast, going out to the Midwest. Um, it's traditional, but rates will plummet going into these areas. Now, it's, it's all up for debate on what type of produce season we're going to have due to the weather we've had the last six months. Um, but yeah. I think without a doubt, we are going to see more seasonality this year in rates throughout the entire country than we've seen the last, you know, three or four years since prior to the pandemic. It's going to be the first year we actually see, you know, seasonality be very prominent on a regional region lane. Okay, it's about time. I'm hoping for, for that uh, significantly. But, you know, as we start talking about what's down the road ahead, uh, I will say the trucking industry is no stranger to AB5. And California has had a long time battle with attempting to block its implementation for what feels like years now. It's, you know, the originally it was intended to make uh, ride hailing and delivery companies like Uber, DoorDash, Lyft, etc., classify drivers as employees versus independent contractors giving them access to certain pay and work benefits. But the actual scope of the language in AB5 negatively affects most California-based trucking and logistics companies. Maze, I, I'm sure you remember this. We watched protests rise in 2022 on the West Coast because of this. And you know, look, while AB5 does not ban owner operators in California, the law can make it very difficult for trucking companies to use them. Just giving you context here in 2022, which we know is two years ago, a lot has changed, but there were uh, about 70,000 registered owner operators in the state of California. Bear with me here, I'm still going, but AB5 is back in the news as the California Trucking Association and OIDA are appealing last month's decision that rejected the latest attempt to block AB5. So my question for you, Mays, do you think this is gonna be a long time battle on the West Coast and will we see any changes that could potentially affect capacity out on the West Coast anytime soon? So I think these associations are doing a great job um, really going to fight for these carriers and these drivers. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think it's gonna be a more prolonged battle because I think it is very impactful to the state of California. Um, these drivers and these carriers, they are already taking precaution 
and changing how they operate. We talk to carriers every day that are classifying their, you know, smaller carriers classify their drivers differently now. Um, but at the end of the day, like being a carrier in the state of California has already been very difficult for years and will continue to be difficult. That's why you do see a lot of carriers going and registering out in other states like Nevada and Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, I think this trend will continue to rise. Um, which is not great for the state of California. It will make it more expensive to operate in the state of California. Um, sure. You know, it hits it hits home with port drivers more than anyone. Um, yeah. You know, the drayage drivers out there, like that's where we saw them protesting last year. That is a large community of owner operators. So I don't think we're going to have an answer anytime soon. If it was to go into effect, I definitely think it would have an impact on the industry, especially on rates. Uh, but I do think a lot of carriers out there are already proactively taking actions to prevent you know it from actually impacting how they operate day to day yeah yeah i love to hear that because i think you know if nothing else we've learned that the you know this could potentially have such detrimental impacts on on smaller owner operators that we've watched fold over the last you know even six months we were just talking about this last week with net new carrier revocations and a lot of that you know do hit that um that smaller mom and pop sort of uh, uh, carriers. So I'm hoping that this will continue to to be blocked. We'll certainly keep a, a close eye on that, especially as the West Coast continues to be our breakout region. Um, so lots to look out for, Maze. But with that, we will see you next week with an all new episode of the Transfix Take podcast. Until then, as always, drive safely.